All right, so a few hours ago, Blackmath Wukong finally released, and today we're going to be having a look at the performance using an RTX 3080. That again is paired with a 14600K of CPU, and that again is paired with DDR5 6400 megatransfers per second CL32 memory, 32 gigabytes of it. And I just quickly want to show you why I did not test on the cinematic preset in my previous benchmark video. I do believe that the cinematic preset is reserved for the lead because over here 1080p cinematic with the native resolution we're not able to maintain 60 frames per second it drops into the low 40s even at times and that's just not what you want right especially for a game like this sure it looks good but 40 frames per second at 1080p should not be what you are aiming for right so i got a lot of comments asking why did i not to completely test the cinematic preset and this is exactly why right and the same applies for the very high preset which we are going to be having a look at right now and here you can see that the very high preset although we are able to hit 60 frames per second at times it's not a constant 60 frames per second and this is still a 1080p native resolution so you can enable dlss but you you really then have to make a lot of compromises just to be able to get 60 frames per second even at 1080p so this uh, i did not even record the the one percent and the 0.1 percent lows for this part of the video i just wanted to show you the performance using very high and cinematic on mid-range gpus yes the rx 3080 is a mid-range gpu it's on par with an rx 4070 and that pretty much falls in the middle of the step right so as you can see the performance is not, not really ideal I'm having to record a voiceover for this video. I actually spent two hours recording this morning before work and then <laughs> my my mic didn't work. So for some reason, I've got no idea why. It, it really, it's really frustrating. So I'm just uh, recording a voiceover here. But now you can see, even if we drop down to DLSS quality or using the cinematic preset in this specific scene, we're not able to hit 60 frames per second. And that's just horrible. So. And if we, if we want 60 frames per second, even though it's not constant, we need to use DLSS performance. So that's a 540p upscale to 1080p. And I mean, you can do whatever you want. I'm just going to not recommend that. And even on the very high preset, here we are, very high preset once again. Enabling a DLSS quality at 1080p, sure that uh, bumps the, the frame rate quite a bit. There are still some heavier areas the game is full of stutter, by the way. I don't know if you had a, a look at the the frame time graph. There's uh, quite a lot of stutter, a lot of traversal stutter. But over here, we almost dropped below 60 frames per second again, 62 frames per second. Once again, this is at 720p internal resolution. So the very high preset and the cinematic preset is just not what I'd recommend. Even for people with 4090s, right? I'd, uh, I'd, I do know a lot of people with the 4090s they are basically going to be playing on a mixture of very high and high not even just the, the high preset or the very high preset so that should that should tell you something right so let's get to the real benchmark now and uh, now we actually have lows and all that kind of stuff so here we are at 1080p high setting um, with the dlaa native remember the DLSS is kind of always enabled, but you can just adjust the resolution slider to 100%. It becomes DLAA, which is your native resolution. And yeah, you can see we are getting around an average of 86 frames per second, right? Which is definitely much better than the very high uh, and the cinematic preset, even when using DLSS quality with those settings. And this is why my previous video are only uh, basically tested with the, the high preset. I did show the very high and cinematic preset, but I just feels like I just feel like it's it's really unnecessary. Now we see a bug here going with DLSS quality. Just look at the frame time graph; it's all over the place. This happens quite a few times actually, and the only way to solve this is to reboot. Uh, sorry, restart the game. So we'll do we'll go ahead and do that. And now with the on the high preset with DLSS set to quality, we are getting. 90 plus frames per second sure it drops below 90 frames per second but this is this is actually pretty good you can enable frame generation at this point and you'll get a high refresh rate uh, output not a high refresh rate experience remember that frame generation does uh, increase your input latency so it negates that uh, that aspect of a high refresh rate experience uh, nevertheless 
this GPU does not support DLSS 3 frame generation, but it does support FSR frame generation and the game does support FSR frame generation. Just a note, FSR does look much worse in this game than DLSS, especially in movement. So use FSR frame generation um, if you want and if you want a little, like a slight hit to the visual quality. Now, if we just drop this down to the medium preset, we are now above 100 frames per second. Most of the time we are an seeing an average of 105 so far. The game still looks quite good on the medium preset. There's just a lot of lighting and shadow popping, which is not ideal. And then if we kick on DLSS quality here, we are now basically getting a high refresh rate experience without frame generation. So this is a true high refresh rate experience. You'll get the the, the added benefit of lower input latency, a higher frame rate, and uh, the game just feels pretty good playing with these settings. Now, speaking of uh, frame generation, you have to use FSR for this GPU to be able to use frame generation, right? Because uh, this does not support the LSS3 frame generation. And uh, I'm just running on the native uh, resolution here. Once again, the FSR slider is set to 100%. And we are seeing 120 frames per second here, which is pretty good. The input latency feels quite okay. That's why I'm moving the mouse quite a bit. Just want to get a feel for the input latency. It, it really feels okay. And I'd say that in this game, I'd aim for around 120 frames per second with frame generation enabled. I noticed that if you are below that, input latency does become a little bit noticeable. It becomes a bit floaty. Right, so that's it for 1080p. Let's move on to 1440p. And once again, just showing you the cinematic preset here. 46 frames per second at 1440p native resolution. Definitely not ideal, but the the benefit you have of running at 1440p, you can now go down to even DLSS balanced and the, the image quality will look plenty good. And you should be able to get a 60 frames per second with the cinematic preset here. But once again, I just, uh, actually I lied, <laughs> as you can see, we are going down to DLSS performance and we're not seeing 60 frames per second. So the cinematic preset is, is just not worth it. Okay. So even if you do enable frame generation at this point, the input latency will be horrible. Anything below 60 frames per second, when you enable frame generation, it, it really feels very horrible. I'd aim for around 90 frames per second before enabling frame generation personally, right? So yeah, you can see just jumping straight down to DLSS performance here on the very high preset. This is basically the only setting that I could use to get 60 frames per second constantly on the very high preset. So once again, it's it's just too heavy. That my opinion anyway, if you want to play 30 frames per second, I mean, you're more than welcome to go ahead and do that. But just dropping this down to the high preset, you can see we basically get almost the same performance as what we had on the very high uh, preset with DLSS performance enabled. And you can see the, the frame time start to act weird again. So I'll probably have to restart the game um, sometime soon. It, it's very weird. It, it, yeah, there we go. So it's the, the game definitely has a lot of bugs. It's, it's a fun game so far. I played for about two hours. I really like it. Um, it's just got a lot of technical issues. All right, so kicking on DLSS on the high preset here at 1440p, you can see we gained around 10 to 20 frames per second, depending where we are. This is actually a very demanding area, this specific uh, spot here, uh, just before we cross over this bridge here. So this is what, like I run around uh, into less demanding, more demanding areas. Obviously the performance of this game can differ greatly depending on which area you are. I'm not very far into this game, so these are just the results in the beginning, right? And now if we drop this down to the medium preset with DLAA set to native, DLSS set to native, once again, we are getting around 80 frames per second. So pretty much the same frame rate as what we had on the high preset with DLSS set to quality. And you can see we are fully GP bound. Our GP power is sitting around 321. Our GP is sitting at 99%. So definitely not CP bound and getting around 80 frames per second there. All right, so then if we just uh, drop this down to 1440p medium with the LSS set to quality, then 120-ish frames per second at times. So if we go to the little bit more demanding area, it'll drop down to around 110 or so. But pretty decent experience here if you if you don't mind uh, dropping down to medium as i said there, there is some pop in shadows do pop in and there's some reflection pop in etc and not the end of the world if you do 
want a higher frame rate. Now, if we then just use the high preset again with FSR set to quality and FSR frames range and enabled, we are getting around 120 frames per second. As I said, these are just my recommended settings basically uh, when when it comes to frame generation this is what i personally would be using with this gpu i might drop it down to dlss or fsr balanced just to just to be able to uh, to stay above 120 frames per second at all times but this is not a terrible experience if you if you don't mind using frame generation all right so i mean yeah the input latency is not the same as a native right but it is something that you get used to and if you do play with the controller it's not as noticeable either so now just testing at 4k i know this is not a 4k gpu but this game actually when it comes to vram management is pretty good you can see our vram usage is sitting at 5.5 gigs so you know even a, a 4060 would be fine at 4k right i mean vram wise so 4k high dlss is set to quality almost getting 60 frames per second and dropping this down to balanced now we are seeing 60 frames per second whether it'll maintain 60 frames per second at all times uh, that is left to be seen but it gets close right so the reason why i'm just running around in this specific spot is i don't want to i want there to be any story spoilers or anything i do fight every now and again but the big boss battles etc i'm not going to be showing because i don't want to spoil anything right now if we use 4k medium preset dls is set to balanced then we are getting a pretty decent experience here getting 80 frames per second which is a little bit higher than with the dls set to quality and uh, i mean even though the resolution scale difference is like nine percent the boost the frame rate often can be a little bit more than that then if you want to use fsr frame generation at 4k yes just with fsr quality getting around 80 frames per second and this is not something that i'd recommend because even though we are getting 90 frames per second it feels bad the the input latency is quite bad it feels very floaty it'll be less noticeable with the controller but it it'll definitely still be there and i mean it's it's not the end of the world but if you do want a little bit of a higher base frame rate you can always kick on fsr balanced but it doesn't really help that much in this game so or in this scenario so let's drop this down to 4k medium with fsr set to quality with fsr frame generation enabled and we are still getting around 100 frames per second well 90 to 100 frames per second in this specific area and uh, there's a boss so we'll just be going the other way now this is uh, might not be a full boss might be a mini boss or a mid boss or, i don't know um no story spoilers remember so uh, th this is actually okay although the input latency is definitely noticeable now if we start testing <laughs> path tracing remember rt very high is path tracing 22 frames per second 1080p high uh, native resolution this is horrible and then even if we drop this down to high we're getting 37 frames per second and then if we drop this down to low we are getting around 40 frames per second right it only has low uh, medium and very high so sorry I, I, the previous one was medium and then this one is low so the rt path tracing within the 3080 probably not the the best use of this gpu but yeah we are actually able to hit 60 frames per second if we use rt low with fsr quality on the high preset so 10 p high and i mean this is this is perfectly playable it'll drop below 60 frames per second at times and you can actually enable frame generation around at this time but just be mindful of the the input latency i, I know i keep on hammering about the input latency but it, i mean it differs between people so just make sure you are fine with it now if we kick on frame generation as i said we are now getting 105 frames per second which is a pretty big boost almost double our frame rate we went from around 50 frames per second to around 100 frames per second and uh, there's just a lot of ghosting and smearing effects with fsr fsr really does not look that great in this game this is not fsr 3.1 frame generation fsr frame generation is not decoupled from fsr so Hopefully they'll update it to FSR 3.1 at, at some stage. But for now, there are definitely some visual issues with the FSR. Now, if we then just use the RT medium preset again with FSR quality and frame generation, we are getting around 100 frames per second. And 
Frame generation actually helps a lot more when using RT or path tracing than it does with raster. So not sure what that's about. So anyway, testing at 1440p on the high preset. RT very high again, FSR quality. Not even able to hit 30 frames per second. The input latency is really horrible. Like it doesn't even feel like 30 frames per second. And if we drop this down to medium with FSR quality, we are seeing around 40, 45 frames per second. And if we use FSR balanced, then we're getting around 50 frames per second. Now it feels better. Input latency is not is not the worst here. And I just wanna, I, that's just a traversal stutter that happens every time you run past that specific spot. So I just wanna test in this specific area. As I said, it's a little bit more demanding and they go dropping down to 45, 47 frames per second. And then if we kick on a frame generation, it goes to 80 frames per second, but don't let the frame rate fool you. <laughs> it's not, uh, it doesn't feel, it looks like 80 frames per second, but it doesn't feel like 80 frames per second. Because we are below 60 frames per second, it is very, very floaty. Dropping down from RT low to, oh, to RT low, we gain around six frames per second, so not even 10 frames per second or 10%. So it's, uh, it's really, I don't know, but, use path tracing um, at your own discretion. Now, if we use FSR performance, so just, just a quick one, DLSS uh, quality is 67, balance is 58 and performance is 50, right? Unless otherwise specified. So you might get away with that. Now at 4K, you won't because we are using FSR performance 25% with frame generation enabled and we're getting 60 frames per second and the game just feels horrible. All right, I think uh, that covers pretty much everything. I just wanted to do a a shorter video just to give you an idea of what the performance is like hope you guys enjoyed it if you did hit that like button hit the subscribe button and as always we hope to see you in the next one